She was dating someone. So you guys were having an affair. No. We were just friends. We were just friends. We were friends. She, you were just friends. You just met her. You didn't even know her. So no, no, you like, just meet someone, get their number, and then call them your friend. Turn her microphone off. Girl. Off. Off in the, off in the house. Um, the story's getting long. I know, I know, because okay, you're, you're interrupting me. Oh, it's my fault. Okay, so like one time when I was four, I was wearing a red jacket. No, it was pink. It, er, it was red. Anyway, what was I telling you? Anyways, I called Kate immediately when the tour was cancelled, and I said, can we borrow some of your gear? And oh, so she said. Here I am trying to have an intelligent conversation with all of you and, and poop joke Tegan Quinn ruined it. So anyways, Kate, I will always remember it's a minefield backstage. You can't say anything without Sarah going, that's what she said. That's what she said. Listen, someone's like, ooh, these are salty, and she's like, that's what she said. It's, it's horrible. I'm backstage, I'm like this. The whole time. Anyway, yes, yes. So you met Kate, your best friends. She lends you some gear. We're there with you. Continue. She saved our career in Australia single-handedly. Oh, she did. And it's been our absolute pleasure to support her band, which yeah. I absolutely love. So please do check out Anne Thank you. Like, people always say, do you, re do you regret calling your band Tegan and Sarah? Or do you regret wearing that puffy jacket on stage with that yellow puffy hair in 1999? And I'm like, no. What I regret is being in an indie rock band and not being an R&B singer. And I, and I, this is going on way too long. I'm going to stop soon. But I just... Singers, because I feel like a lot of the girls that are R&B singers that I really respect are different than me. Like they, they have. I, I mean, thought you were gonna say closeted. No, no. I feel like if I was an R&B, I could pick up other R&B singers. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. They just—they're very feminine. They're very sexual, and they're very. They're confident and like, a lady, you, do you feel Tegan and Sarah is no. stifling your sexual side? 
<laughs> you pick your outfit, my friend. <laughs> no, but I just feel like you want to put a boob top on and some lycra? Fucking power to you. <laughs> Direction. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like it would be really hard for me to wear, like, okay, just imagine any any number of outfits from a Rihanna or, or like, or Alicia Keys video, and then imagine me singing Sentimental too. So what are you saying? That's right, encourage her. Next time we come here. I always thought that my androgyny was adorable, but apparently it's not. Apparently people want me to sex it up, but, which is why I'm going to play this next song. With all the buttons on my shirt that I have. This one's for Motown. How is everyone? Good. Johnny, where do you where did you learn to do that? Like where the to add a bottom end to the clapping and cheering of the fans? Did Tegan ask you to do it? That was just an impulse, that was instinct. What did you do? He goes, here, let's do it again. I need to crap your life. Are you guys having a good time? <laughs> I feel like a music teacher. I thought that was just my thing. like, everybody join in. <laughs> while, we're, while I'm talking at you, why don't I introduce you? Is this, oh, oh. 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 More about you? Go ahead. <laughs> You're really a doctor? No, you're not. Okay. Is, there's not one doctor. If we were on a plane, there's a doctor right there. Okay, you don't have to, no one's gonna make you come up on stage. You're not gonna have to give me a blood test or anything like that. I just got a question. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Which one's the doctor? Can you stand up and come up on stage for a I just said they don't have to. Maybe someone could Google it while we're playing the next song. But what does it mean when the top of your mouth is like insanely itchy and you've been taking medication for all day? Hold on, hold on. I can't hear you when you all talk. What? 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 Allergic reaction, yeast, anything else? One at a time. I know you can't coordinate. I will point at your section. No antibiotics, no. It's just really itchy and it feels really good when I itch it. <laughs> like, no swelling, I mean, I'm swallowing, no problem. Swine flu, awesome. Okay, very supportive. Thank you, Victoria. I think I'm fine. Just wanted to know what I do. Okay, please, introductions. Or I was going to say, Johnny, maybe we shouldn't introduce you now. We'll introduce you when, when the memory of Tegan itching her mouth. Um, actually, no, for real. Um, he's one of your own. One of your people. Johnny Andrews. You know what I was about to say? I was just about to say, what a handsome devil. And then I was like, we're in church. Don't say that. <laughs> Standing to my left, you're right. He's also from Victoria. He's also a handsome D. And, uh, like, no. <laughs> Edward Gallas, Ted, Tedward, Teddy Robinson. <laughs> His last name's Gowan. <laughs> okay. Look him up on the phone book. He loves to get phone calls for strangers. <laughs> so he's like, I will. So, okay. Thanks, Ted. Doesn't get old, does it? You know, you've been touring with us now for how many years? Five or six? Fun every night, right? That's always fun. Always <laughs> fun. Everybody's always having laughs. 
charcoals and stuff. Okay. Over there, he doesn't seem to be... Oh yeah, you're lit. You are lit. Apparently the lighting guy is not as interested in you. <laughs> as he was in the He got very excited with the lighting. Um, also, one of your own, Victoria people. Sean Hubert. He does. You are a certified magician, or whatever they're called. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a para half medic. I don't think the fact that he can give CPR and bandage a wound makes him a doctor. You know what? Back in the 1800s, you would have been a fucking surgeon. All right. <laughs> People would have. You're right. You're right. When I need my appendix out, I'm coming to you. That's what I'm saying. He, he had basic skills. He would be like MacGyvering it up. He'd be like with a tube in and plastic. And oh, I don't want a tube in me. I <laughs> but imagine the sensation of a plastic tube itching it right now. I bet that feels probably good. No. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna try to have some momentum now in the show, so we're not mad at you, but we're gonna try to be more pro in the next one, two, three, four, five, six, five songs, five songs, and then we're gonna come back and play an encore where we will just totally ruin the rest of the show. You'll just be like, everything up to that moment will be erased, and you'll be like, God, what a shit show. <laughs> Too, huh, I don't mean sorry, that was confusing. I the love cave guys are great, but our guys are pretty awesome too. Huh? I hope you don't take it offensively when I said cave. I didn't mean like you were primitive. I just <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> exclusively tour with men because, um, I don't know why, we just do, and we can't get rid of them and they're easy to work with, and, uh, and, and, uh, we do have, we do have girls around, but not, it's, we're always outnumbered is basically what I'm trying to say, and the other day we went on an excursion as a group to, um, to a tube, like a, like a, like a tobogganing mountain thing where you, you know, yeah, Cartier, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was interesting because everyone is given a tube, like a rubber tube, you know, to, to, to go up the hill and down the hill on. And it was so interesting to see how boys played with their tubes. And how girls used their tubes as a mechanism to get up the hill. And it was interesting because it's not like I was judging, you know, strangers. I was judging the people I've known for, you know, years. I mean, I've known some of these people for, for years and years and years. And they, they absolutely fell into this primitive male ritual of taking their tube and swinging it around and hitting it on the other person's balls and the other person's tube and hitting each other's tubes with their feet. It just was so gay. And, uh, gay human, someone who identifies as gay, I found their behavior to be very homosexual. <laughs> and it's just interesting, I think that's really good. I mean, I don't think you guys are gay, I just thought that it was interesting how suddenly sexual you all seem with each other. Well, yeah, that's the thing, is that they're not just... I mean, it's a fine line between fun and then really serious. Like, I saw a pack of men that were not associated with us. Men, not boys, men, dads. And they were doing that to each other, like kicking the tube into the other guy's tube, and then that guy's tube would fly out it's on a cord, and it would hit the strangers. And the guy who had kicked the tube would be like, tube, tube. Like, how are men? I was like watching it, I was like, it's so interesting. Like, I just want to be real with you for a second. If, if I was with a bunch of girls, and I took my tube, and I swung it around, helicopter and hit another girl, it would be because it, be was, it was the primitive times and she had just stolen my baby and my baby. And I was fighting for some I don't know, check me if I'm wrong here, but like, isn't it maybe the 
the boys can speak up. It's kind of a form of bonding, though, when you're like wrestling with each other, and, right? You're bonding. It's your way of hugging. You're like, I love you so much. I'm going to hit you so hard. Right? It's so. It's it's really interesting. Like I can see when we were in high school, we had some guy friends that would do that. Like they would kind of get drunk and then they would just sit in a circle and then one of them would fly out and punch the other one in the balls or whatever. And then they'd all laugh. And the guy who got hit would be like, oh, for like a half an hour. And then he would, as soon as he was recovered, he would punch the next person that he could in the balls. And we had a really good friend who works for us. Like one of my closest friends since I was 14. And I remember saying to him once in high school, I was like, what would you do if Mitch came up to you and punched you in the balls or like pushed you down on the ground and pretended to hump you? And he was like, totally serious. He was like, I would be so upset. I would probably cry. And that's how I knew, that's how I knew you, you and I would always be friends, Jeremy, is that you didn't understand it. But it was so interesting because it was totally their form of bonding. It was their closeness. If a girl punched me in my nether regions, I wouldn't press charges. <laughs> I guess she doesn't need to punch you in your nether region, so she can just give you a hug. But for some men, their way of saying I like you is to say I'm gonna hit you with my tube as hard as I can. You're talking to people? Who's over there? Sexy people! My favorite person on earth is over there. Who is that? Dallas from Sydney. <laughs> no, that's like I'm flirting with you, but I'm not. <laughs> City of Color. Yeah. No, no, say hey. That's what I mean. Say hey. Yeah. Say it all on two, three. One, two, three. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, and then and then maybe we say we say Paula. Paula? Is that over? That's why it's full again. Okay. And then on the count of three, you'll say Paula. <laughs> two girl in a coma. Are you ready? One, two, three. And I think you should buy them if you have any money left. You haven't lost it all. And uh, this one's for them. It's been a great month. Ugh, I just licked my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this one's serious. It's summer. No laughing. And we need a. We need no, I don't. This every time we do this, I hope we die right well, there on the spot. You know what? When you're like shooting change. Let's stop. Let's stop going like, around. I hope you die. Sorry, I wish I was dead. Or because if we die tonight, everyone's gonna be like, we basically willed it. We like manifested. believe they don't load their own guitars and the band was like well they did forever and like they're backstage meeting contest winners it's not like they're not doing anything and then when I came out they're not gonna meet themselves they're not gonna meet themselves <laughs> anyways so then I came out and the girl followed me through the club right like two steps behind me and she was all like I can't believe she, like to her friend I can't believe she's not gonna hang out with us I know what a snob I can't believe it I knew she wouldn't anyway and finally I just like hit my like you should Hot karate chapter. I did. I turned around. We got outside, and I was like, "What is your problem? Like, what is your problem?" And then she was like, "Well, why aren't you gonna come for a drink with us?" And I was like, "Cause I'm going home. I'm going to the hotel. I'm tired. It's one in the morning. We drove seven hours today. I'm tired." And she was like, "I knew it." And then, and I was, I was. It was Regina, and it was 19. It was 2003. So. I, 
just be quiet. That's a real place. It is a real place. Regina, I know why, but that's why Canadians are so sarcastic. Because yeah. we have places called like Moose Jaw and like Regina. Regina. Regina with an R. So anyway, we were in Regina and I was tired and I just gotten over the flu and the night before some guy jumped on stage to tell me that I wasn't playing hard enough. You really attract the jerks. I know. I had the flu. Be glad I didn't cancel the show. Anyway, so well, not that I would ever do that. That's you're starting to talk like those girls on Laguna Beach. <laughs> So anyway, you're like, I, I was so busy, and then I got stuck in the line at Booster Juice for my smoothie, and I could not go into work. <laughs> and I always had Booster Juice for hours. When did I ever go to Booster Juice? Anyway, no, I, was, I just drink whiskey. <laughs> anyway, okay, so the girl's mad at me, oh, and she Lord. keeps going on. I'm gonna finish it now because it started, and people it's are ended. videotaping. So she's, I mean, I gotta finish the story now. So. Um, anyway, she just kept going at it and then she kind of swore under her breath or whatever and then we were loading the cab because Sarah and I were flying to Winnipeg and, um, or I mean to Toronto. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> details, details. So, so I kind of, well, I ran at her, you know, and she ran and got in her car and, um, <laughs> I was like, what is your problem? <laughs> wasn't my show enough and I drove this far <laughs> and then she was like she like got in her car and I ran up to the car and she had her window down a little bit and she was like fuck you and, you know yelling at me and then I came out the window and I started to hit the window and she did up the window and then my manager picked me up around the waist and dragged me and threw me into a cab <laughs> And I was like, I, and then I slipped a note under her windshield and I was like, if you still like me, check yes for you. <laughs> One time a girl almost blew my neck in a club and she got thrown out and she accused me of being racist. Really sad. Yeah, it was, that was a very sad one. Yeah, it was not really talk sad. about that one. I'm not going to tell the whole thing, but she was like 15 and wasted and she, she tried to kiss Tegan. It was weird. But, in, but she didn't, it wasn't a soft kiss. It was like she grabbed me and turned my neck really fast and it cracked. And the scary person freaked out. If there's a therapist here, I think Tegan needs to work. It's because, you know what it is? This is my summation for this whole thing, is is it? We really like what we do. Like it's a really fun job, and like it's really exciting getting up every day. Like today we woke up. Well, I did. Everyone else showered. I didn't. I don't know if you can talk about it. Um, but we wake up and we show up and we go into a Borders and people put guitars on our laps and all of you are here and it's like the most magical kind of weird thing. Not to get all cliche and weird, but it is the holiday season. So. How intentional is the distance between the two of you and where you live? And I only say that because bands who live apart, it's very intentional usually. <laughs> Well, Sarah's lived in Montreal eight years now, so any intentional space that was, you know, initially created by Sarah's move feels so small now. You know, I mean, this country feels small to us. You know, we're, we're traveling all the time, and we probably spend over 200 days of the year on the road, so we get a lot of bonding time in. Um, <laughs> what are you saying? I'm just saying, like, more, why did you say bonding like that? Yeah, we bond. We bond. We jam. Whatever you did earlier. Yeah. Um, no, I think that uh, when Sarah said she was going to move to Montreal, I think the only friction that came from that move was it was in the middle of a record cycle, so it was kind of inconvenient. And also, that three-hour time zone difference sometimes can be a real pain. You know, like, our, our whole operation is run off the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So there were times when I felt her move represented a move away from music. Not from me, but from our career and what you mean to say is responsibility yeah I felt like the responsibility was on me now because Sarah was in Montreal blah 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 and I was like hope you're having fun in your winter wonderland so but um <laughs> snowshoeing or whatever you do but um no but now it doesn't soaking up culture yeah exactly learning French oh wait no you've been there eight years and you haven't learned any so <laughs> this is bonding what you're experiencing right now it doesn't, it doesn't matter if Neil Young signed to you, you're still sisters, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. exactly. But yeah, no, this, I think everyone has this image of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, you know, Bob Saget's our dad and we have bunk beds and even though we're 30, we just like love hanging out all the time. <laughs> nobody lives with their siblings except yeah. married people. So, uh, no, I, it, the space, I think if we didn't do what we do, we would probably live in the same city or close to each other. Sure. But um, because we do what we do, it's nice to just it's nice to have part. space. The, um, From everyone. You admit. Yeah. Oh, right, ready to play Thanks. sibling rivalry? Yeah. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create. Uh, I'm gonna ask you questions that you'll have to a answer honestly. Okay. Who's better at lying? 
We don't lie. I don't believe you. I'd say I am. I, I think I'd probably be a better liar. Yeah? I don't know why. Do you ever lie at her? All the time. Who has the last word in an argument? Sarah. Mm. Uh, did the audio pick her up going, mm. <laughs> I love that. Who wins more arguments between the two of you? It never feels like winning. No. no, no. Nobody wins. <laughs> Nobody wins. Uh, which one of you is better with money? I am. That's Sarah's really a question. for me is the calculator. Just let it go. If better means... <laughs> If better means if better means keeping it all and and protecting it, that like, is what that means. Is that what? Because <laughs> yeah. I always thought it was like, you know, like spending investing it, and yeah. spending it, yeah. In investing it, right? <laughs> so you enjoy your money more. You oh, hang yeah, on to your money sure, more. Sure. All right. Uh, which one you gets drunk faster? No, oh, that's me. Tegan acts more drunk. It doesn't matter how much alcohol yeah. has been it's consumed. She always, I'm my mother's daughter. Yeah. Half a glass of champagne, and I talk so loud. <laughs> so this is sort of, I guess, we, we sort of talked about this, but we didn't determine a winner. Who's, who wins in a boxing match? Me, if it's wee boxing. Yeah. yeah. She wins at wee boxing. If the two of us went at it right now, I'd kill her, and she knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's a better uh, guitar player? I think Sarah's more patient. And I think she's more meticulous than I am. So I think the stuff that Sarah comes up with is um, pro probably more difficult when it comes to actually what she's doing because she has patience and I'm much more of a... I just I use the guitar to facilitate a song getting written. So I'd say Sarah. Which is See, that's a compliment. Thank you. It is, yeah. Mark it down. I'm so suspicious. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> Who's more romantic? I think I am. I... Think again. I think it's who you ask because yeah. I think it depends. Like what, what I think, like I think Sarah comes off maybe like more sweet in relationships. <laughs> like, and I think that I come off like maybe just like <laughs> more. No, nah, this is going to be another compliment. I think Sarah comes off more sweet in relationships where I think I come off like maybe a little psychotic. <laughs> a little psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll make really extreme decisions really quickly. So, but but I think we're both pretty romantic. Right. That's why we do what we do. All right. Who's more stubborn? <laughs> so stubborn. I don't know. So stubborn. Do you think she's stubborn? You know, I mean, I think that I think that we both we we have really strong opinions about things, and we don't back down. And I think that's why we make great leaders. I think that's why we make great band leaders. And I think, you know, being stubborn and and staying true to yourself is what helps you get through in this industry. Turn stubborn into staying yeah. true to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> It, being right is important when you are being when you're in our industry, you know. And I think in our relationship, you know, it's important to to hold your ground. I think that it's a bit of a chicken fight most of the time between Tegan and I. That's so, a, that's a thing, right? Chicken. Yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's where different. you drive at each other. I lost you when I was just thinking about how stubborn you are. Right. <laughs> Nobody cares. Everybody here would be like, I would work for you for free. Oh. Yeah. 
Listen, I know. It's, it's a nervous habit to say, you guys have, because sometimes people don't, and it's the weirdest thing. It's, you know, in some countries, the words just don't mean the same thing. Like, maybe bowling here is said completely differently, and we both know that since the beginning of time, humans have thrown things at a bunch of stuff and kind of knocked it down. But maybe you call it a really cute Swedish name. I don't know. Like it's called like, like, it's called like a hoo-ha. <laughs> You really call it bowling here? Yeah. yeah. No. Just straight up bowling? Yeah. Bovla. Like, let's go bowling. Bovla. 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 You guys are so smart. <laughs> but um, we do we do sometimes bowl with what we can find around us. <laughs> That's a metaphor. What was that? How come there are no girls in the band? No, no girls? girls? You're looking at it. <laughs> we don't do birthday kisses but, but no because then if, then everyone's birthday is gonna happen today but um, but I will wish you happy birthday and I'll tell you a story about when I turned 18 uh, my mom had two friends that were hysterical they were so funny and um, when our birthday our eight, Sarah and I are twins and when our 18th birthday came along all our friends went away to, to university so we were alone because we decided to be musicians mm -hmm. So we didn't get to go to school and get smart. We just got to travel the country and rack up a lot of debt. And um, and so on our 18th birthday, my mom did her best to pull together a, like you know a bunch of an odd assortment of people in our lives that were still left in the city. And these two friends of my mom came and got completely wasted. And um, and it was hilarious. It was the first time we really drank legally with our parents. Um, we were pretty good about only drinking when they weren't around um, up to that point, but this was like a, like an opportunity to get drunk with them, and it was really fun. Um, nothing really bad happened that night, um, but uh, at one point we went out to the garage, and the garage was, uh, you know, maybe a hundred paces from the house, and we had a band, like a kit, you know, drum kit and speakers, and like we used to jam in the, in the drum, and anyway, we went in, and one of our friends, was with my mom's friends and they were singing this song that used to be really like big like, a lot of people knew it in Canada because it was like um, a sex line like a and it was like this really like uh, like at like 1201 these infomercials would come on and these like really slutty girls would be there and they'd be all like pick up the phone I'm all alone <laughs> but way hotter sounding <clears throat> and um Anyway, I walked into the garage, and I don't know what the fuck was going on, but these two girls, these friends of my mom's, had the microphones, and somehow had figured out how to turn on RPA, and they were all like, pick up the phone. And they were probably at this point in their like mid to late twenties, and a really good friend of ours who was 18 was in the was in the garage with them, sitting on the couch, cross-legged, like holding a beer, and was like. <laughs> It's kind of like this situation, I think, right now, baby, potentially. <laughs> Except I didn't sing it to you, I was just singing it to everyone, so don't arrest me, but... My high is coming to an end. There's <laughs> always the encore, huh? You can top up when we get backstage. <laughs> uh, go get me one of those energy drinks. Just kidding, don't show up. Uh, 
This is Sarah's birthday. We played laser tag. There were 33 of us. I came in third in that. Do you know how good that makes me? But then came in like 23rd the second time. Sean came in first. Sean came in first both times, but who cares? <laughs> He's good at everything. He can do handstands, he can jump up on those yoga balls and juggle. It's seriously ridiculous. He is, you are understatedly ridiculous sometimes because it's just like yesterday we were putting together. We're very DIY in this band. We were, we took a break from rehearsal to build our, our keyboard stands and all of a sudden I look up. I think a symbol would be the word we would use, not build. We didn't. No, oh, we have some. Now that you're all not high, you're all like, oh, I'm an English professor. <laughs> I used to do, I used to do crosswords, but now I do Sudoku. Do you yeah. know how hard it is? I told you already. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we were assembling the keyboard stands, and all of a sudden I look over, and Sean is just casually carrying a drill across the room, and his muscle was bulging out of his shirt. Like, it was as if he was carrying. It was as if he was. He was seriously carrying Whistler. Like he was just. Like, Sarah was like, "I am straight again." Like they would all be like, you just put it, just for everybody just and then I was like, why don't you all get your own? And then it just it's like an hour of making sort of gay references, but we're gay, so we can do that. <laughs> but anyways, it was just everyone was I don't even know why we started talking about this. Well, maybe she was on her go. You go. <laughs> so it was our birthday.
I have to do it, I'm sorry, it's probably really annoying. I just gotta talk to the people in the room again. It's so weird. Hi. Did you guys have fun? It was good. A lot of thumbs up. Is that like all the kids' parents in there? <laughs> just kidding. Um, we had a great time. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're gonna do this one last song. We'll see you all again soon. Don't forget to watch yourself on Reflection. Well, I know like being on tour and away from your family or your loved ones is usually really difficult. Um, but having your sister with you, does it make it like way better? I think that we have like there's like sometimes being with your sibling is irritating. Of course, it's very obvious that you know after like ten months of being in the same space, you start to feel agitated and and things get out of hand. But it's sometimes easier to be around Sarah than it is to be around the rest of the band because I can't abuse the band the same way that I could abuse Sarah. Proof. Right you know, here. yeah. That you abuse me. Whatever. I would never lay a hand on Sarah, but like emotionally, like she can come in and be in a bad mood and I can like be in a bad mood back to her. But if I come in and the band is kind of like, one of our band members is in the hallway and I have to like pretend he's not there because I won't be honest, but I can't be mean to him. Even if I'm in a bad mood, it's like I have to treat him with respect in a way that like with Sarah, it's like, she can say something Are you obnoxious even drinking? to me. Like you're admitting all of this like so freely, like you spent thousands of dollars of therapy and you're just saying it all now. Yeah. Why? Progress. Why yeah. now? No, I mean like, you know, so that's how you can be with family. You know, when you hang out with your mom and you're all excited to see her and then something she just catches you on the wrong day and you're walking through the mall and she's like, Where do you want to eat? And you're like, I don't know, where do you want to eat? And then she's like, I don't know, you pick. Well, don't you care what we eat? No, I don't really care. It's fine. It's fine. You know, you'd never do that with a friend. You'd be all like, uh, let's pick. What about here? Yeah, okay. And it's awkward, you know? And there's like a awkwardness between us and our band that keeps us healthy and happy and enjoying each other's company. Whereas like, well, we'll just be honest. Yeah, we'll just be rude to each other and be like, oh, this sucks. I That's hate like, you. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. And then we're just like over it. It's like keeping it a little more real. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a good balance. It's a good balance. So. How do you like having or dislike having the lesbian or sexuality card kind of predominantly like? I think that, like, for us, like, the big thing was that when we first started out and we never talked about our sexuality, we, every time I would do an interview, someone would be like, what does your boyfriend think about when you're on the road? Like, is he jealous? Is he nervous for you? Like, that you're going to meet other people? And I was like... I don't have a boyfriend and then I was like I have a girlfriend and then it's like you just you realize that like you can spend your whole career people are gonna ask that question no matter what I think people are really interested in what your love life is if you're a band writing about love they want to know who the person that you love is and so there's like a natural desire to want to be honest and explain to people and then you know of course there's like I really respect that a lot of people don't want to talk about their sexuality and whatever but I think it's less about our sexuality and just about like who we really are and I know that it's offered a lot of like, um, like a lot of our audience that's queer or whatever. It's like, it would do them no good if we were like, you know, playing the like pronoun game or whatever with people. Like, my partner and they think and like, who cares? It's I like, think the demographic you know? that we're appealing to, too. I mean, it's pretty wide. Like, you know, we have everyone from like 14 and 15 year olds to like, I mean, we've done a lot of touring with like Neil Young and Ryan Adams and like the killers. So our demographic is quite wide. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that, part, that section of the population of humanity is pretty open-minded and so it just never felt like that big of a deal 
to be open, but the like significance of being open is starting to like really hit me. Like when I'm meeting moms and their daughters and they're coming up and being like, when my daughter told me she was gay, I was totally beside myself. I totally freaked out and I wanted to kick her out of the house. And then she told me about you guys. And you know, my mom has been really vocal about how it's like, what it's like to have us as musicians and lesbians and like all, and you could just see the parents are like bonding over it with their kids and they're totally comfortable. And like, I like the idea that we're like some sort of like weird, you know, representation of like how you could be gay and not necessarily be all the stereotypes that like mainstream weird right, you know, media have made it out to be. You can be an a like just like an average person, like, and it's just part of who you are. I don't think we're scary, which is why well, I think, I think that, you're like, terrifying. You're terrifying. <laughs> you started rambling there. You just went like this. You're like, and the right wing media, but that was your left, and I was like, people are gonna think we're dumb. So great. It looks opposite on TV. <laughs> That's right. It's all fine. <laughs> I, I was thinking that I. It's so weird. I just went right. It's because you're gay. You can't tell the difference between left and right because you're gay. You're confused. It's very confusing for you. Yep. I was too busy thinking about being gay than learning my lefts oh, and rights. Stop. I'm so distracted <laughs> by being gay all the time that it's hard for me. I have to have a personal assistant. How about being twins? I mean, that That's could be even like, worse. You just said that you can't stand, like, oh, we can be I'm on only tour together for 10 months, <laughs> but you were together in the womb for nine months. I know. That was the worst nine months ever. I wanted my money back after that trip. I called my I called my travel agent, and I was like, yeah. I wanted my own room. Anyways, but I'm not going to tell you that story, because we kind of have a rule. Me and Tegan, when, when something's really funny, we're only allowed to tell it once. If you play that kind of... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking, John. Because I'll break your head. So that's broken here. Something's broken? Yeah. Okay, so... So I want to offer a few suggestions in, 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 in light of some of the facial expressions. Maybe pushing each other isn't going to work for the people around you. So I'm going to give a demonstration of things that you can do to, to 
expel energy, but not push. Ready? Oh, zalig, zalig. Lekker dicht, lekker dicht. Pak, veel te dicht. Hij racht het. serious thing not uh, not serious like a car accident or STD but like, <laughs> serious, like you know just having a, I wouldn't describe either of those with that melody but yeah they're more like can they do something more like anxiety I only know one anxiety so this one I already played it so yeah you did already play it so one trick pony but Anyways, I wrote a song about not uh, not feeling uh, uh, not feeling totally great and uh, about being a. This is a downer for the end of the show. No, fuck off! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, you're driving me insane. Like, you know when people are like, the press will be like, who do you play it up that your sisters? And I'm like, fuck you, fuck off, fucking die. And then, but then in this moment, I'm like. I hate you. My skin feels so dry right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fucking, who cares what the song is about? Here we go. Yeah, there you go. I wish I had grown up in, uh, in a different time. Maybe like the late 1800s where... <laughs> I mean, not for all of the things that happened in the 1800s, but like... I wish I... Like, I just wish I had grown up in a time where... A friend recently told me that at her school, first base is sex and second base is like... Bone sex. <laughs> and I am home run. I am shocked. I am so insanely shocked at kids these days. And it was so horrifying for me when I was a teenager. So I can't even imagine now. So I wish I had grown up in a time where... Maybe yeah, but back in the 1800s, you just would have been married at 14. Yeah. Maybe I just want to grow up in a time where people wear nice outfits and they say things like, Would you go steady with me? Not... <laughs> And I sometimes go out on what the kids call dates, you know, and... You go out with kids? No. <laughs> they put out. Oh. No, no, Jesus. No, no, no. Um, no. I know, the kids are calling it dates these days. They're not, I'm not dating any kids. I'm dating adults for the most part. And uh, I'm not dating anyone, but I occasionally go on dates. And they do not know how to work for it, but I bet if I took any of you on a date, you would work for it. Yeah. I like how the likes illuminated every face in this place just now. Take your pick, likes. 